Do you know what I mean? This whole moving into the age of Aquarius and the whole new age stuff. Well, well um, of course. I mean, I, 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 I mean, from my point of view, at least at, at this point, from from what I've picked up on so far, this is the reason also for why they are uh, reverting back to all of these, uh, you know, esoteric. Some would say even pagan if they come from a Christian background, yeah, what have yeah. you. But the reason for it is is that I think that there is a spiritual truth in many of the. Um, you know, methods, so to speak, that they actually use to control people, meaning that there actually yeah. is something real to this. But and they have known this for a very long time. But they consequently uh, either you know mili- manipulate people in the other direction and consequently say that yeah. you know that's all bollocks. Don't look at that. <laughs> yeah, we have your religion right here for you. We call it Christianity, what have you. And I consider yeah. many of the real religions that we have around today basically is a reformation from from the oldest ancient religions going back to the ancient yeah. world of of Cana, Egypt what have you you know um, yeah. and it doesn't matter in what what package they sell it to us if you're smart enough you're going to be able to see through that if you're clouded by too much of uh, you know the man- manipulation that that's that's unfortunate but but in many cases it's it's people's own choice and, and I have nothing against yeah. that either you know no, so. that's of, course, of course you can't dictate that oh can you no no um, I mean essentially like the thing that I'm trying to like to get across what I'm trying to say, I mean, I, I'm moving to an area that Matthew Deleuze touches on. If you, I think you've spoke to Matthew Deleuze before. Mm, yeah. But um, essentially, for me, the power structure that remained in power, or that, that started, you know, something that built the pyramid, that got the people to build the pyramid, was a very powerful force. Mm. And in the in the history of, well, I've got a, a particular book called uh, The Secret History of the World by Jonathan Black. It's an esoteric secret history of the world. And um, this particular book states how that since, um, you know, the early days, we're getting more and more ingrained in matter. We're moving, like everyone thinks of evolution in a material sense, but consciousness has equally gone through an evolution, mm. moving from the spirit, drawing itself down into material matter over time. And so, for instance, when you listen to the Egyptian stories of Zeptepi the first time in the state that the gods ruled the earth, Oh, ruled Egypt, sorry. And then mm. the gods retracted, so they built statues, effigies for people to worship to. And then eventually, after the gods had retracted so much, the pharaohs then ruled the earth for the gods, or ruled Egypt for the gods. Mm. And then, essentially, you know, went from statue worship to idol worship into what we're currently at, we're at celebrity star worship. Well, there you idol. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing. Madonna, all this lot. It's all part of the same thing. Well, exactly. But, yeah. Oh, sorry. Continue. But, but my thing is, is that obviously the Egyptian power structure that was in place then has never died, died out. Because if you look at the way the power structure has moved, like essentially when Egypt collapsed, you had the exodus from Moses and stuff into the area of Israel and Palestine. And then the next major power structure was essentially with Rome. And if you go to Rome, you'll notice that there's Egyptian obelisks. If you go to Rome, you'll notice that there's Egyptian obelisks in front of the Vatican, in front of the Pantheon and stuff like that. They, they carried those things over there from Egypt. Yeah. And then, obviously, the, the, the Roman Catholics went on the Inquisition slaughtering out any heretical like religion, such as like the Cathars and the Bogomils, mm. um, moved through Europe, and then essentially found a new power structure to erect in Paris. And obviously Paris has got, you know, it's symbolic for power, Aziz, it's already in the word. Yeah. Um, but Paris, you know, they moved the obelisks and stuff, Place de la Concorde on the, you know, the Champs-Élysées alignment. And, yeah. um, <laughs> you got that whole symbolic area. And like when I went there the other day, incidentally, I went to uh, the front of the Louvre and um, they've got a, a you know a aerial viewpoint of the, the layout of the Louvre and it's an exact replica of Luxor Temple with the Avenue of Sphinxes running to Karnak Temple in Egypt because mm-hmm. I've, I've been to the same place and I've recognised this. But there's no official statement anywhere that the Louvre is based on Egyptian temples and alignments yeah. and stuff, but it is obviously. Of course. Uh, so this power structure, then once it had done in Paris, it decided that you know this this it wanted to find the the, the new like centre of power, and it moved to London. And if you go to London, they've got an obelisk and stuff like that. You've got Big Ben. The official story is that uh, Big Ben was named after this politician um, named Ben who stood up in uh, Parliament and said, "Oh, let's call it Big Ben," and everyone laughed and said yes. Yeah. But it's not hmm. called Big Ben because of that. It's named after the Ben Ben Stone, hmm. which is like you know one of the very first um, you know it's stands proud in the Egyptian, um, you know, history. Of course, and, and ben- 
And yeah. even in Hebrew, a Ben is, is uh, the son of someone, so it's the big son. Yeah, you know? yeah so the, ben, uh, the big Ben, for instance, is a huge obelisk type structure yeah. right near the obelisk and the London Eye, which is symbolic again for the all C and I. Oh, I know, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously this power structure moved from London to America. And then there we have it. America has been used as an excuse to run all these wars that it's needed to run until it's collapsed itself into the ground and then America will die. And that's that's how I see it. America's been used, essentially. And they've mm. used the people there. Well, um, yeah, the, and that's also an interesting point. I mean, there's so much to, to touch upon on that, but just to be brief about it, uh, even the fact that I think that they want that if, if we talk about America as an experiment, if you will, and 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 much in the same way that uh, that we can look at Soviet Russia as an experiment, but uh, yeah. or, or you know communist you know Russia, but um, they might they might have wanted a certain kind of uh, stock, if you will, of people or or a certain type of breed, those who were willing to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know draw out the roots of from course. their own country and just leave and and have a certain type of mentality. And if you yeah. take all these different things into account, you you end up with a really interesting picture that 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 potentially is showing you that what what you're mentioning here that 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 they wanted to use America for a specific purpose. but but anyway, yeah, yeah. Pl- of please course. continue. yeah, I mean, um, Obviously, if we're going on this premise that this power structure has been there and it's never died out and stuff, and then obviously you start looking at the English words and the language and stuff like that, and we're all connecting back to this idea of Scion, and then you start thinking, essentially, with English words, as I've said, and you've got the word television, mm. televi Scion. Yeah. So basically, you know, everyone thinks the television is an evil hypnotic machine, anyhow, I mean, <laughs> other than the ones who enjoy it. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's there to televise Scion. Yeah. <laughs> and then you think of the word spiritual ascension, spirit, spiritual ascend Scion. It's the same, it's in the words of what we use. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's endemic and it's there, you can't get away from it. Of course. Uh, and and uh, vi- vision or eye zi- vi- yeah. Zion, that's even uh, the eye uh, in, in there, yeah. you know, because it has to do with visualization or to see, yeah. th- see something, you know, so. Yeah. Mm. But this is, I mean, this is where, like, I can start to, like, wrap this thing up slightly. Yeah. Is that um, it, if you look at it, it becomes it starts becoming apparent that it's more to do with just like, for instance, uh, it's more, to, more, it's more to do than just someone hijacking a power structure and keeping it like in control. It's almost like it's, you know, to do with material reality itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts to feel like that it's coming from something that's, you know, if you think of us as souls and spirits trapped in matter, yeah. then like, this is where I'm starting to like perceive things in the sense of, if you look at, all religious figures throughout history, every single one of these illuminated, enlightened figures, every single one of them has a sun behind the heads. Mm, yeah. Right, so sun, sun worship, mm, yeah, again. Yeah. And Christmas, for instance, you can't get away from Christmas. I mean, Matthew Deleuze talks about this stuff, and I recommend uh, listening to Matthew Deleuze because he's, he's a very intelligent man and he's a very, very special man. Um, but Christmas, obviously, we're all driven into this worship of the sun at Christmas. You can't get away from it if you've got kids or if you're related to kids. You need to be part of it. Mm. You know, we all buy into this Christmas thing. Christmas sure. is sun worship. If you look at the tree that you've got in your living room, you know, it's like the tinsel is a serpent. You've got an all and eye at the top. You've got a bloody pagan tree, you know, pyramid thing that's mm. sat in the corner of your room. Yeah. And then... And then Easter, obviously, again, it's more sun worship. And when kids, for instance, are all wanting the Easter eggs and stuff, it's nothing to do with the fact they're eating chocolate. They're buying into a ritual. Mm. They're buying into more sun worship, whether you look at it or not. Yeah. Um, and the same goes with, like, for instance, crematoriums that haven't got any kind of religion tied to them. If you, if you look at crematoriums, there's sun symbolism at crematoriums. You look at number 10 Downing Street, and above the number 10, there's a sun symbol. Like above the you know the center of where, well, where our prime minister resides, you look at shell petrol and it's sun symbolism, you know. And then for instance, something I found the other day, my UK driving license. There's a hologram you can barely see, but I shone it in the light. It's a sun and a pyramid mm-hmm. on 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 my driving license in the Brit in Britain. Yeah. You know something you'd expect on the dollar bill. <laughs> and so all I can say is that essentially with this symbolism, when people don't realise what they're looking at and what they're buying into this this stuff is like taking spiritual energy away from them i.e it's you know they don't realize what it's doing um i I don't know how to really put that into words but 
it's like we've only got our five senses and like we're aware of everything within those five senses but much like with the you know the light spectrum we're not aware of what microwaves and x-rays and infrared rays and everything are doing there's stuff we don't understand and like our five senses are a filter yeah